to uh, Cole's Hub. My name is Mike Wayne. I'm retired from Chemin Canal Press Company, and I uh, have the great pleasure of being uh, chair of the uh, Elmira College President Council. To get things started, I'd like to recognize a few current and former Elmira College trustees that are here with us this evening. Martha Pierce. Give us a wave there, Martha. Uh, Jack Welch. George Winter. And I don't see Tom Trainer, but he might he might show up later. So if he, if he does want to read, be sure to thank him for his service and his trustees. Um, and I'd also like to take a moment to recognize some uh, civic leaders who are here with us tonight. The mayor of the city of Elmira, Dan Mandel, in the back. He'll take up collection later. <laughs> and, and with him is uh, Elmira City Manager Mike Count. Mike, thanks for being here. While unable to attend, uh, Senator Tom O'Mara, Assemblyman Phil Palmasano, and Assemblyman Chris Friend send their regards and have provided proclamations for our award recipients uh, this evening. So in order to begin our program, I'd like to introduce Dr. Chuck Lindsay to start our proceedings. Chuck? So thanks very much, Mike, and welcome, everyone. It's good to have people on campus. You see that we're uh, actually starting to have some activity on campus. Maybe when you walked in, you saw the softball game going on. Uh, the students are very excited by the warm weather. And I also was talking to folks outside here and found out that the CDC made a new announcement that uh, maybe if you've been vaccinated, you don't have to wear masks inside or outside. Uh, of course, we don't know who's been vaccinated or who hasn't, so you can. that's apparently the new standard, except when you're on public transportation. So I'm feeling footloose and fancy free, let me tell you. Um, it's certainly been an unusual academic year, and that's putting it mildly. You know, we got into the pandemic in March of last year, and we came into this academic year with a sense of confidence. Well, we got this. I think we know how to handle this. Well, we found out maybe we didn't know how to handle this because when it came to October 1st, we had to make a quick change to online classes and have students stay in their residence halls and be safe uh, because we had a spike in the number of positive cases. So we learned from that and we were able to stage a comeback so that in term two, students were invited back to campus and we introduced a robust testing program which has worked quite well and made the transition first to classes after the first few weeks uh, started classes in february and then we actually started intercollegiate sports again with the um, cooperation of the empire eight league which was very challenging because of the standards one has to meet for the NCAA, but very exciting to have those kinds of activities going on again on campus. And the athletes who are in the high contact sports needed to be tested three times a week. So there's a lot of testing going on, but I have to say we have a resilient student body. Everyone has been very anxious to cooperate and participate to make sure that we could have a safe but fun campus experience. Um, along the way, we introduced, you may be aware, several new academic programs this year. We made the announcement that we, of the Tommy Hilfiger Fashion Business School that will be starting next fall. I'm very excited about that. A member of the Hilfiger family is going to be touring facilities tomorrow to talk about locations for various things. We also introduced a major in healthcare management, and we've had a finance major for several years, but now the finance major offers a CFA and or CFP certification uh, with it. So really great for being prepared for the job market. To kind of focus on one of the reasons we're here tonight, you know that internships are a hallmark of the Elmira College experience. Every student at Elmira College is expected to fulfill, complete an internship. And that's about 
taking the lessons from the classroom and giving them that practical experience related to their major program. And the college truly appreciates what the community did this year in making accommodations so that internships could really happen. Same thing goes for our uh, community service program. All students are required to perform community service. Most of those community service hours take place in Elmira, and we've had many organizations, uh, the uh, Finger, uh, the uh, Food Bank of the Southern Tier, EOP, many others, who made some accommodations so that our students could successfully complete their uh, community service hours. Amazingly, some of them said, maybe I could just skip this. No. Um, and then I'll also say that uh, those community service hours were performed quite well. I had a conversation with Mike Collins this morning where he pointed out that the students participated in the downtown cleanup earlier this month, just a few days ago, May 8th, and that we were out in force and it made a real difference. Our strategic plan at Elmira College includes coordinating efforts with the local community, with the city of Elmira and the southern tier in general. We believe that our success and the city's success and this region's success are all tied together. A rising tide lifts all boats, and we're excited to be reaching out to do partnerships and coordinate more completely with those in the surrounding area. Um, uh, we are going to have an in-person graduation ceremony on June 6th. I'm knocking on wood. Very excited about that. The students are absolutely thrilled. We were able to have that uh, ceremony approved by the county health department. And while I won't be shaking every student's hand, I'll be bumping elbows with everyone. Uh, we are going to have uh, our commencement speaker, our honorary degree recipient is a Mr. Ron Verclearen. I don't know if anyone knows that name. He's a senior vice president at Corning Incorporated. And his department is the one that's responsible for manufacturing the vials that all of the vaccinations were put in. So he has an interesting story to tell. And it's an uplifting story. Um, so I'm glad, just in summation, that we've been able to partner with so many different organizations across the community. That's a focus for Elmira College in the future. So I invite you to partner with us and stay tuned for some of the exciting developments we have planned in the future. And I especially want to extend appreciation to uh, Mike Wayne and the members of the President's Council for their support and leadership throughout the year. Thank you. Thanks, Chuck. And, you know, I, I wouldn't be so hard on the college. Nobody really knew how to react to this. And, uh, I, I think the college did a great job. It was, a, it was an ever-moving uh, goalpost, and uh, uh, both Elmira College and, and the entire community really stepped up and, and did the best with what we had to work with. Now, the good news for Elmira College is that Chuck has written a book, How to Handle a, a College in a Pandemic Period. <laughs> that will be on sale in the lottery on your way out, if you'd like to, but that would certainly help future generations maybe be a little bit more of a choice for um, and it is great to see the, the students back out and about on campus, with or without masks. It, it's just very exciting to see the activity level pick back up, which is really exciting for all of us. So, as members of the Elmira College President's Council, we recognize that the college is an important asset in the region's economic, social, cultural, and certainly educational fabric. To that end, one of the many tasks of the Council's Business Relations Committee is to select the Stan Energy uh, Prize winner each year. To help introduce and recognize this year's prize recipient, please welcome the chair of our Business Relations Committee, Judy Phillips.
of the most important things that I've learned from the attorneys at San Diego County was how to interact with other criminal justice and legal professionals. On a daily basis, I would be interacting with attorneys from the public defender's office, police officers, judges, and court staff. Although most of these interactions were virtual, I was able to observe the manner in which all of the members of the Tioga County District Attorney's Office conducted themselves. Every single person in the office knows just how to act in a variety of situations, whether that be talking with the victim, conducting a hearing in front of a judge, or just simply talking with other members of the office about a case. I believe that anyone can learn the law, but it takes a special type of person to be able to act professionally and appropriately while practicing the law. This is why I made sure to take note of the, how the attorneys were acting and then try to model that behavior. Not only did I learn valuable professionalism skills from the attorneys during my internship, but I gained an understanding of what a good judge is from observing the title of county court proceedings. County court judge Gerald Keene was the judge that demonstrated what I believe to be a model judge in our criminal justice system. Every time that I was able to sit in on the proceedings in his court, he knew just what to say and he knew how to take the time and analyze each situation properly. He then made sure that he explained his analysis when he gave his opinions. Judge Keene is also very good at maintaining a calm and professional demeanor throughout all proceedings, despite how unruly defendants may act. It's safe to say that Judge Keene stood out to me amongst the many judges I was able to meet. Recently, I was invited to return to the office. In fact, I was in court this morning and have been there all week. The first in-person jury trial since the pandemic has started this past Monday. Words cannot describe how amazing it is to be observing these proceedings. I've been able to truly see the inner workings of our legal system while meeting a lot of interesting and important people along the way. I am extremely grateful for all the opportunities that I have been given at the DA's office, but I have to say that this trial is the most educational, intriguing, and exciting experience thus far. As I move forward with my own career, I will take the knowledge that I learned from this internship with me. I have learned and continue to learn so much from everyone that I come in contact with. I know for an absolute fact that there will be multiple uses for this knowledge at every step in my future legal career, be that during law school classes, becoming a prosecutor in the future, or one day being elected as a judge. Again, I would like to thank my internship supervisor, Mrs. ADA Reardon <coughs> and DA Kirk Martin for their guidance and for providing such an enriching experience. I would also like to thank Mr. Larry Freeman and the President's Council for making this award possible and for supporting the Elmira College Internship Program. Thank you. It's uh, also my pleasure to present uh, Lillian Reardon, uh, Assistant District Attorney at the Tioga County District Attorney's Office with a certificate of appreciation for the firm's outstanding support of the Elmira College Internship Program. While Lillian was unable to join us tonight, she will be presented with her certificate at a later date. And congratulations to uh, your parents as well, who uh, have obviously brought uh, education to, to the forefront of your, of your uh, life so far. The, um, it was very exciting for those of us on the Business Council to sit through the um, Zoom interview uh, of our candidates for this award and the uh, energy and enthusiasm that Farrah brought to this um, uh, program here at the college and to her internship at Tyrone County was, was just exceptional. So congratulations again and, and thank you for that. And, um, Larry, certainly please take back our thanks to everybody at the Stan Energy Corporation for your continuing support of students here at Elmira College. And we also want to thank all of the organizations, as, as Chuck alluded to, that um, took time this year to provide an internship program. These last two years really haven't been the easiest to, to, um, to put an internship program into place, but they've all done um, great jobs. And part of that is because of the wonderful relationship that college has with uh, individual organizations that, that provide internships opportunities. As we all, those of us that have all been through college know, um, trying to understand what you really want to do in life is, is pretty important and to get a, an opportunity to kick the tire, so to speak, is, is uh, essential. 
So we appreciate all the organizations that have contributed to that. So at this time, I'd like to invite Mary Beth Cadwell, Chair of the President's Council's Public Relations Committee and owner of Ray Jewelers to present the President's Council Award. Mary Beth.
gotten like this. So thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, uh, President Lindsay, for this honor, President's Council members. Thank you so much for this. So, um, so as a 2013 MIR College alumni, I was totally surprised and humbled because that's who I am, especially when I, you know, walk into a meeting thinking something else, <laughs> and that happens. So, as a, as an Elmer native, um, I thank my family for always supporting me from the time of getting my education to all the time I spend with others because I do spend lots of time with other people. And so, as you all know, you've done your volunteer work. Sometimes you're away from your family, you know, and you, you take some other time, you know, for, for other people. So. I want to send a special thank you to my husband, Terry, and my daughter, Peyton, because they are the ones that, you know, are at home or she's at college when him, you know, being retired, then I'm not there. So I love you both. Thank you so much. And my mother, my Aunt Christine, my brother, my sister-in-law, thank you guys for always being there for me from watching my son, my 42-year-old son, that is a special child that is in of Shimon Skyland from home. He's doing fine, he's great. And so, you know, it's that's what I do. This is some of what I do. So time and family are very important, and I do recognize that. Working in the profession of human services and partnering with many in the community makes it easy to support my community. The key words is human, community, service, and value. Value, the definition, definition of value is the regard that something is held to deserve the importance, <coughs> worth of use, usefulness of something or someone. So with that, please be open, listen, and reach out when you can help someone else. So thank you. I told you it was going to be short this week, huh? Thank you so much for this, this really, the opportunity to speak to you, but just for this award, I mean, I am just so humbled always am, and people are like, oh, you deserve it. Well, thank you. You know, I appreciate it so much. I just, so. Thank you. 